for <coughs> we are making bun today yeast rolls am i supposed to say that okay we are getting very warm water like bath water This is one quarter of a cup. Well, it isn't, but it will be. And then we are taking our active dry yeast. This could be an issue. This is all I use. No instant, no nothing else. Active dry. Fleischmann's, or there's another brand that I can't think of right now. I don't use any other brands or any other type. It goes in the water. <clears throat> then, sometimes, I give it a little pinch of sugar, just to make it happy. Later we'll give it more sugar. I stir it up a little bit. Then we just let it sit here to proof. Then we're taking a half a cup of milk. And I always scald the milk, regardless of what the recipe says. Scalding milk has little bubbles around the edges. It's not boiling. And on this stove, it takes a while for some reason. So we'll, we'll bring that to a scald. Now the milk is scalding because it has these little bubbles around the edges. And there's a little crinkliness like a crinkly film on top of the milk also. So now the heat is off. We're going to take it off the heat. And now we're going to let it cool. And I always do that. I don't just heat it up a little bit and then turn it off. I heat it to scalding and let it cool back down because that's what my mother always did. But also because it works for me. I have had one failure with rolls, not for that reason, but I always follow the same procedure. So now, while this is cooling, we're going to put some sugar in there, some more, one quarter of a cup. We're going to put in some salt. I, well, I did not get to that yet. Um, a teaspoon of salt. <clears throat> and a quarter of a cup of butter. Um, you don't really have to cut the butter off, but sometimes I just make it a little smaller. I put it in this hot milk and it'll melt because the milk is hot. That butter is regular, the regular butter we always use, which has salt in it. But if you always eat salt-free butter for some reason, you could use that. It doesn't matter because you add salt to the rolls. I put two eggs in a bowl. <clears throat> it would be nice if the eggs were warmer, but I didn't think to put them out ahead of time. So they'll be fine.
Okay, now I have my favorite whisk back. So I'm going to whisk the egg. I don't know if you have to really do that, but I'll do it. Doesn't hurt. Okay. Now, everything has to get, this has to get cooler, this has to finish proofing, and this has to get a little warmer. I forgot to mention that the, the yeast is starting to get little bubbly things, and it's warm, of course, because the water was warm. It takes, you can let it sit there for 10 minutes or so. Um, it's sort of rough. Now, I'm stirring this a little bit helping the uh, butter melt, but also dissolving the sugar that's in there. And there's also the salt also, which, you know, it would dissolve by itself, I suppose, but it's easier to get it out of the pan if you do this. So even though this is really hot, I'm gonna pour it into the cold eggs and hope that the result is warm, a warm liquid. The, you don't ever want to put really hot liquid or cold liquid with your yeast. The most important thing of all is that the yeast needs to just be warm. You don't want to like kill the yeast and you can do that. So let's see how warm this is now. Might be we'll give it a few minutes just a couple minutes to get a little bit cooler <clears throat> okay, I poured the the hot milk into the cold eggs so now this is a nice warm temperature and so we're going to put add it add our yeast to it or add it to the yeast if we it doesn't really matter just so we get it all together By the way, what does matter is you don't ever put cold eggs into the hot milk. You put the hot milk into the eggs. If you put the cold, the eggs into the milk, they will cook. But for some reason, it doesn't work both ways. So that's why I did it in that order. The um, hot liquid was poured onto the cold eggs. Now, everything is in there except the flour. <clears throat> but we just sort of skim over and make sure, and yes, everything is in there. And we need about three and a half cups of flour. If I were making a cake, or cookies or anything else, I would sift the flour. So, oop, don't want any hair in our. Bread. But in this case, I'm going to boop, put the flour in and get my big spoon. You could also, of course, do this with a mixer if the mixer has a dough hook. You can't do it with a, any other kind of mixer. It has to be a heavy stand mixer with a dough hook. And I always did do that until my mixer broke. And then it occurred to me that I really didn't need a mixer. So I've been doing it like this. But the mix, uh, dough hook does a great job, too. And you can also, if you wanted to make a bigger batch of dough, it's helpful to have a mixer doing it instead of your hand. Okay, that's two cups of flour now. So we'll stir it some more. Okay. 
This is where it starts to get to be fun. Okay, another cup of flour. And we'll just put in some of it. This is the third cup. But we're not going to put it all in at the same time because it gets hard to stir. So this ugh, is what they call shaggy. So, you know, it's not too fun when it's like that. It's a little hard on the hand. So at about this point, this is where I get it out of the bowl <clears throat> and put it on my pastry cloth, which I would not consider baking without a pastry cloth. You have to have a pastry cloth. You don't really have to. I like to having a pastry cloth. Put some of the flour you already measured on the pastry cloth, because it's really messy at this point. And then you just get all this kind of messy stuff out of the bowl. No, I shouldn't be using this knife because I'm going to use it again. Well, Okay, I'm going to just put the rest of this third cup on there like that, because I already measured that. <clears throat> and then we just start folding it over and kneading the dough, and it's real soft. And the recipes tell you that eventually the dough is, when you get all the flour in, the dough is still supposed to be almost sticky, which is kind of, if, well, when you knead by hand, you get to know what they mean because it is sticking to my hands already. But the recipe called for three and a half cups of flour. And some recipes say three and a half to four, but I think I better do what this recipe says. So, so here's the, the next half of a cup of flour. Because we don't really want it sticking to our hands because then it's not in the dough, in the rolls. I especially like to use a pastry cloth when I'm making cookies so that that dough doesn't stick to the board or countertop or whatever I'm rolling it out on. Do you wash it afterwards? Yeah, just like you would wash a dish towel. I don't wash it every time because it doesn't get dirty. But if stuff, you know, sticks to it, I do. Um... What was I gonna say? I forgot. Oh, some recipes tell you that you should knead it for about 10 minutes. I don't know if I need that long, but it is still sticky. Maybe we can put a little more in. 
this amount of dough makes about 12 rolls using one package of yeast. A lot of recipes call for two packages of yeast or about two tablespoons and twice as much flour and everything else, of course. But it makes an awful lot of stuff to knead <clears throat> by hand. If you use a mixer, you might, you know, it's not an issue. And I like to knead with my hands like this. It really is whatever's comfortable. You could knead like this. There are pictures of hands in the Beard on Bread book and lots of other bread books. So, I don't know. I just like to do it like this. I don't know that it really matters. You just kind of keep twisting it and turning it and going like this. Apparently, you're supposed to do this for 10 minutes or so. I just do it <clears throat> until it isn't sticky anymore, which it still is, kind of. And then, all of a sudden, it seems to get really nice and smooth. But this part takes a while. The other thing you can do if you use a pastry cloth is lean on it so it doesn't, you know, keep moving away from you. If you ever make uh, <clears throat> a little mistake and use a little too much water or a little too much milk or something like that, and you end up using more flour than you intended to, the only real problem with that is that the salt, you don't want to do that too much because I don't like salt-free bread, and that's what it will start to taste like. <clears throat> if you add too much flour. You could always add more salt, of course, but it's better to just measure carefully. It's getting to feel a little smoother. I still have pretty much flour, though, so maybe I won't get 12 buns. So, this is sort of rhythmic and relaxing. <clears throat> Some people find it very calming. I think it's kind of nice, even if you have a mixer. Even James Beard says, if you mix your dough in your mixer, do a little kneading at the end by hand anyway. Not just because it's calming, but he, I guess he thinks it, the bread turns out better. Well, while we're doing this kneading, I could tell you why I put the lid back on this. I was very careful about that jar because it would be easy to knock the lid on the floor. And I'm very fond of that jar. That's very old. I think you were talking about Walter. This is from my uncle Walter who had a job when he was a really young man maybe a second job in a candy factory or whatever you call a place that makes candy. <clears throat> and this was, uh, I don't know, the, uh, two of these came home with him. I'm not sure why or how he happened to come up with two of those. But my mother always kept our Christmas cookies in those two jars. And I got one of those and my sister got the other one. And I used to keep cookies in it, too, until I kept hearing the lid clank, and I decided not to do that. So that's why I keep my flour in there. Very careful. Now, see how this is different now? Maybe you can't see that on your phone, but it's very smooth. It's supposed to feel like a baby. A little naked baby. So 
I think we kneaded it enough. So now what we're going to do with it is wash that bowl or put it in a different bowl and let it rest, let, uh, let it rise. <clears throat> Which is pretty cold in this house. It'll probably take a couple of hours, hour and a half anyway. So, um, when you let the dough rise, oh, I've got this flour left. You just put the dough in a, whoops, in a bowl, but you grease the bowl. This butter is hard. It isn't even, it's just because it's cold. So I just take the butter and go like that and grease the bowl. And then when you put the dough in the bowl, you just put it in there like that and then turn it over because then you have butter on top of the dough. Or you could brush butter onto the top, but it's easier to do it that way. Just flip it over, and then this won't get all dried out. And then you take a brand new towel someone gave you for Christmas. Nice and clean towel, and you just lay it over the dough, the bowl, and put it ideally in a warm place. This is what the dough looks like in this particular bowl. Um, and the dough is supposed to double. The recipes always call this doubling. <clears throat> and in this recipe, in this bowl, this dough will come up to the top of the bowl. And so it takes, it takes a while. Like probably could take an hour. It could take an hour and a half. Sometimes it just will not rise. And I probably shouldn't recommend this. But I have been known to take this bowl and set it in another bowl that's full of warm water, just like that, to get some warmth around the bowl. But I don't really think you should do that. I think you should just find a spot that's warm enough. So maybe the kitty oven. No, not the kitty oven. It has to be clean, <laughs> a clean spot. Um, so we'll just leave it like that and see what happens today. It's an unusually cold day. It's also sunny, so the furnace is not as much as it sometimes is. So, I can't think of anything else right now. Oh, the recipe, this recipe, um, is very similar, I think, to one that my mother always used. My mother always made buns. And she gave the recipe to other, her sister's-in-law and the May family. And pretty soon everybody was making buns for Christmas and birth. Every, every family gathering had homemade buns. Because my mother had a KitchenAid mixer. That's what started it all. And um, I had her recipe, and I don't know what I did wrong, but it didn't turn out like her buns. And then... Actually, Jackie Archer told me she made some buns from a recipe in Family Circle magazine many, many years ago. And so I had the same magazine, <clears throat> and that's where this recipe came from. But my father always thought this was my mother's recipe, which was fine, because that made him happy. And it may be exactly the same. I don't know. It can't be too different. I'm just looking in this book, which I know Madeline has, and maybe others, just to see if I've forgotten something. And when I opened it, I realized I have forgotten something. If you're, if you're ever using yeast that's not in a little package like that, it would be helpful to know that one package equals a tiny bit less than one tablespoon. If you bought a bulk yeast for some reason, active, dry, uh, you could measure it with a tablespoon, level it off, and that's it. You can also use cake yeast, but cake yeast is fun. It's like an art gummy racer. That's exactly what it looks like. And it really is neat to work with because it feels neat, but it gets moldy really fast. You have to be careful where you buy it and 
hope it isn't moldy when you get it home. So I don't, you don't even usually see it anymore. I just love drawings like that. That's why I bought this book. Um, also, I was remembering that you can freeze the rolls when they're finished. If you wanted to work ahead and save them for Christmas or something, or if you had too many, just put them in a Ziploc bag after they're cool and they freeze beautifully. If you're making bread, certain kinds of bread, there's so few ingredients. It's so simple that people just have a mental block about how hard it is to make bread. It couldn't be easier. But you have to watch out. You have to have some time. Not your time, but the dough's time. It takes time to rise. And also you have to be careful of the temperature of the ingredients. That's it. And if you're making bread, you don't have so many ingredients. Just water is your only liquid, unless you use a little milk. Here's our dough. After rising for an hour and a half on a chilly day, looks ready. Some recipes tell you to punch the dough down and let it rise again which would only take about half as much time. And then you could form it into whatever it is you want to make out of the dough, like buns. Only other recipes say you don't have to do that. You can just let it rise once, then form the buns, and then let the buns rise. So that's what we're going to do today. But if you ever wanted to let it rise again, you could. I can't. Taste the difference. So we'll see what happens. If the timing works out better to let to make it get done later, just punch it and let it rise again. If you want it to slow down the rising, you could let it rise um, in the refrigerator, covered with saran wrap or something tight like that. I don't do that usually because it takes forever for it to warm up again. But you can do that. So now we are going to make some buns. So we'll just take a wad and sort of knead it into, just keep folding the edges in a little bit, as much as you want to. Like that. And then you try to do the same size so that you don't have one real big bun and one. I, I don't know that it would matter, but I guess it wouldn't matter. It looks better to have them all the same. Oh, this pan is cold. <clears throat> This is an old icky looking pan, but I like to use a glass pan because sometimes when I take the buns out of the oven later, I'm not sure if they're done, even though they look done. So then I can go like that and look at the bottom of the bun. Whereas if it's solid, I can't see through it. So I should just buy a new pan once in a while. These are the buns that we have, you know, Christmas Eve, and you could also make these into hot cross buns by adding, um, if you wanted to, a little spices, some spices to the dough with the flour, when you put the flour in, like mm, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, some nutmeg, whatever kind of spice you like along that line. Allspice, something like that. And then if you were making hot cross buns, <clears throat> you would put a cross on top of frosting much later. This is very versatile dough. 
You can also roll this dough out and make cinnamon buns or things like that. There are also other things that you can make that I really like a lot. <clears throat> and I know Malin does because she I made them once when she ate them. You would take a dough like this dough or a similar dough and roll it out on your cloth and then you could put something on it like grated cheese or um, some slightly cooked onion, little onion rings or pieces of ham or whatever you wanted. And, and then you would roll the dough up and cut it into pieces that are about an inch wide or so that look kind of like cinnamon buns then, but they have savory filling like ham and cheese or something along those lines. So that gives you a little ready-made sandwich when you after you bake it. Well, I guess I didn't quite come out right. <clears throat> These are kind of small buns. In fact, this one's maybe we'll just make these a little bigger. I didn't think to take this pan out sooner. It's really cold. Kitty oven. It'll warm up. I have the dough in the sun, in the sun porch, so it would rise in the sun, and it did. But now it's getting later, so now these have to rise. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think these will take another hour or so. And then we'll bake them. They look kind of small. I think we should let them rise for another 15 minutes. See the bottom? Mm -hmm. I like to use a glass pan so I can see the bottom. And they're heavy, <laughs> so I'm going to put them down. They were in the oven at 375 for about 15 minutes, 14 or 15 minutes in my oven, and there they are. <laughs>